If you enjoy the content, don't forget, like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. So what we've got here is a Beretta WEWL SO4. And the complaint is it's light striking. Can't see that, can you? No, okay. Top barrel's light striking, not as deeply as the other one. Right, so let's see what we've got. One thing you've got to do, <laughs> you have a really, really thin screwdriver. And if you're doing it a lot, you uh, grind your screwdriver so that they have a very thin hollow ground. And even then they bend and you have to face them up occasionally. So similar things. So this has locking screws. Which I'm going to try and get for you. All right, so little locking screw there on the lock side plate. Side plate screw has a locking screw in it. There and there. That one looks a bit funny. Feels a bit proud. I'm going to have to look at that. Might be a replacement situation. That one's been been replaced. Would have had an engraving right through there. This one looks a bit funny. I'm not sure about. Seems to be a slightly proud. Well, we'll get into that. So that's what I've got to do using a very fine screwdriver. I tend to grind them down myself and not use those. What I call little, you know, uh, kit screwdrivers. All right. So what I do so is just good practice. As I leave it proud if you can see that so i don't completely unscrew it so that i can unscrew it and leave it in the screw otherwise we lose them all together now you do need to do this on the bench sort of press down very firmly and completely square into the screw so i'll be obstructing for a moment oh, i turn it there you go it's turning there but you can easily slip I have been known to have to polish the whole lock out, whole lock plate, because they're very, very awkward, especially on the Berettas. So there you go. So now you have one screw encapsulated. I'm at risk of messing this up. Get this to focus closer. There you go. I tend to always forget to un unfocus it. So yeah, that screws back in there a little bit. You can see that. And you have to remember to unscrew them to put them back in fully. There's a lot of crud in here in the channel there which is concerning. I wonder if they've been using uh, a bit of Loctite or something to keep them in. Anyway, so that's, this one's a replacement one because it's not engraved. This is common. The replacement ones are usually stronger than the originals. Anyway, looking for a magnetic dish, can't find one. Put that there, that'd be fine. There we go. Right, so same here. I don't know if I can do this for you to see. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's stiff. There we go, here it comes. Be very careful not to slip. This has got a little bit of burring on it, like it's had a, somebody's had a good go at it. Mm, yeah, I'm not too convinced that this is gonna come out in one piece. It's, this is an original one and they do tend to have very long slots on them, which makes the, the grub screw very 
temperamental. Oh, it just feels horrible. Yeah, I'm not happy with this. It looks like it's loose. I'll see if I can get that closer for you. So before you even start the job, you end up with another problem. Yeah, look, see, it's falling apart. So, you know, that's knackered. Sometimes these come to you and they've already had somebody, when I say they, let's just say a friend thought he could do it or something, quite a common thing. Or it looked on the internet and it looked easy. <laughs> You see, these are actually entertainment videos. I'm not actually instructing you how to do it. It's more of a, this is how it's done. You know, there we go, right. So, look at the depth of these, the way these are cut so deeply. Such a long slot, there's no surprise that it splits. So yeah, that screw's had it. And another thing that happens is if a bit of dirt catches underneath the plate when it's screwed back in, they don't always go down completely, which is why you sometimes get that. You have to have a scrupulously clean interaction. See if I can just show you this a bit closer. All right, this is, don't normally do it like this. I usually work. This is fairly. You have to unscrew it quite perfectly. See how easy it is to jump out of the slot. Wheeler do a set of uh, gunsmithing screws turn screws they're essentially a box of uh, hex bits and a little ratchet screwdriver they're okay but they do wear out and they do tend to twist because they're quite hollow ground i don't have any here at the moment i've got something similar there there we go so i'm gonna put this down it's just quicker <clears throat> zoom in, zoom out, forget to do that every time. Now it's loose, I use the thinner screwdriver, it's just easier to locate in and spin out. Oh, it's a bit tight, I'm a bit curious as to why that is. No, it's not that tight, it's just a bit awkward. Uh, I should better knock this out now. To loosen the plate off. Come on. Yeah, right. So that one's not retained because it's in bits on the bench. So now you just use a, a light spring pin or spring just or a, just to gently press that plate out. So, and then the same through the sears hole there. There we go. They're reasonably clean, as is common. Nice retained bridle. It's all part of the part. Of the whole action quite a pretty lock they don't need to do dueling nobody sees it except me but there it is just a mark of quality gilded screws and pins obviously they've got the serial number on them as well yeah nice very nice so you check here that's not the one. Oh, look at that. There you go. So when I test fired it, it obviously failed.
cracked. So here we go into stripping them down. Let's see if I can get a closer view. Right, so we're going to take the broken lock apart. I've got spring. I've got springs for both, but this one won't be so violent if we uh, do this first. My gimbal is attached to the table on this occasion. Annoyingly, I need a better screw for that. Gonna have to grind a screw for this because it's Beretta size and they're all very fine. They don't need to be this fine. Full of dirt. Which is curious because this this was allegedly serviced already. Yeah. Sometimes I find an electrical screwdriver would fit because it's a fine. Yeah, there you go. It's not the best thing. My screwdrivers are so abused. It's untrue. That one needs a grind as well. So I go back to my old trusty. It does fit. I ground it round. I ground it so much. So I've hollow ground it there. So that it comes to a point. So that's why I've abused so many different screwdrivers. So I just tend to get them and abuse them. You have your favourite tools. Some gun shops have the whole set. And it looks very grandiose, but you know, it isn't what it is normally. Like I say, you can get yourself a wheeler set. That shouldn't be under tension. But it is. Do you want to knock those pins out? Look how that gold's that should be gold there. But they're not. They're worn out. It must be under some tension then. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, yeah, it's got a small amount of tension on that from the old spring. Right. That's better. I have to relieve the tension on it. Need a pin to knock that through. Okay, not the label. Oh, okay. Rookie error. They're sided. There we go. Already pushing through. They're not actually under any tension at all, there you see. Uh, I tend to pull them out, but with my fingers over them, because usually there's a spring for the sear. There's the sear spring. Sits in there with the sear. So I'll just pop one of these in there like that. Sort of aid memoir to keeping the bits together. I don't know. My client said that this was serviced. It doesn't look like it's been serviced to me. Well, so there it is, the most beautiful system with a self-contained bridle. 
so much easier to work on than the old bridles you had to screw and unscrew. There's the damaged part. And by the magic of YouTube TV, there's the new ones. Ta-da! Just checking that they are the same profiles and there's no grinding off to be done. No. Right, I'm going to clean these before I put them back. Just looks terrible. But a lovely machine plate nonetheless. Okay, so I'm just going to go in this with a little bit of tissue paper and meths. Nothing more than meths. I'm just not going to. I'm not going to do aggressively clean these. But it's clean. Uh. Okay, so pop that in there like that. You gotta get your little spring in place. I'm trying to do it without using slave slave pins because I'm gonna have to make some. I just don't want to. There you go, push the spring in place. And yep, yeah, it's working. So there is some slack there, at least. It is under, under some degree of compression though, so. There's a little spring missing. That's interesting. Hmm. Epic fail. Right, I was looking for a coil spring. It's so simple, this lock. It's so elegant, it uses one spring to do the lot. It's that easy. My goodness, it's gonna be fun then. I may end up having to put a slave spring in. <laughs> right, okay, let's see if we can do this. Cameras it in my way, <laughs> annoyingly. Okay, so so a slave spring is a, a, sh a short. You have to make them up per job. It would sit somewhat like this. Not normally full size dimension, but it allows you to retain a spring, for example with it dis about disappearing and it will only be the depth of that <clears throat> and it can be something quite crude it's possible i could make one up really quite quickly it's it's a disposable item it's not intended for be permanently used and it gets displaced by the pin itself pushing it through and it just retains the spring in place but yes i think i'm going to need to make a slave spring so for this kind of thing, I usually use a piece of steel wire. And it is going to look pretty rough. Just make sure that it will go through. It will. Right, so you might wonder why is that on a little stalk? I've left it on a little stalk, a little sprue, because it's a tiny item. And I don't want to be spending my time on the floor looking for it. Anyway, 
As you see, it quickly falls off. But I'm going to do it on the bench, aren't I? I'm going to just give it a little tickle up with a file. I don't want that muck going into the lock, so I'll do it off camera. That's all I'm saying. It takes time to prepare these little items, so it's still in its rough form at the moment, but it's about the same size pin. I can make them again and again, but sometimes it can be really tedious and time consuming. So, OK, let's get back to business. A little slave pin drops in there. May still have a little tiny bit of resistance going on. Yeah, it's a little bit grippy. Or well, that was the spring itself. And that just holds it in. Just enough. Only just enough. So, let's see. Shall we, shan't we? handy to have a second spring you can refer to and just check that it is indeed doing what you say it says it should do otherwise I'm on the floor looking for a little spring or well, I don't think there was one because I checked how did I check well I checked I ran back the footage that I'd made earlier that's how just having a, a little check make sure that these are the same length yeah, there's no there's no correct one. Right, so there's a so that spring. Yes, there you go. So either one spring does it all. Aren't they clever, eh? Now this is where I hope I've got my guess the metrics correct, and I can push that slave pin out. which I have. It's done the job. Now these pins are more or less in. There you go, back in. Job done. See how that does that? So curiously, the most expensive lock in the group is actually the simplest made. Can you believe that? I can. So now their spring compression situation needs to be done. I don't know how I'm going to do that on camera. Probably need to show you with this one. What needs to be done? As this wasn't the broken one, this is a better way of viewing what it should look like, albeit dirty. So that's the hammer. And let me see if I can show you. Right, I'm gonna put my hand there, focus. Great. Now I can show you. Comparing side by side. So you see the stem, the fine, the bottom foot part of the foot, let's call it the toe, is resting just inside the bridle here. And that pin is latching there. Can you see that? I don't know if you can. There you go. Now that's the third pin. <laughs> oh yes, that's right. It's got. This is the peculiar thing. I'm I'm reliably informed that this is the SO4. Three pins on one side, two pins on the other. How do I know? Because I asked Beretta in-house gunsmith. That's how. So you can't do a complete comparison, but but for the fact that this sits in there. So that needs to be pressed in. Now again, I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to do it off camera.
Okay, so I'll be back. I'm back. And a little moment of inspiration. If you've been watching my channel, you might not, you might, may know, these are my, albeit homemade modified, uh, spring compressors for the coil springs. And I was just looking at them on the side of the table. I just thought, you know what? I wonder, as it's not a lot of compression, whether that will just push straight in like that. Oh, look, it has. I then had to take it apart again, get the springs out um, in order to show you how he achieved that. It looks to me like we need to just press it in a tiny bit more. But in the absence of any manuals to tell you how to do these things, you get exploded diagrams from the suppliers. And that's about it, really. I think we need a little bit more on that, but it's about where it should be. We'll find out, won't we? So that bent there sits on that. I'll show you on this one. It sits like that. It's not a lot of room. I don't have any factory tools, so I am just sit, sit, literally just sliding it in. So although it's handed, it's in a mirror situation. That one drops in fairly easily without any com complexity. But it has got three pins on it. This one doesn't have three pins. And don't ask me why. But they, they, they are different. Look, three, four pins, if you will. Three pins on this one. So there's going to be some compression needed to get this in place or is it needing to be further squeezed I suspect it certainly looks that way there because that's side by side it's sticking out a bit more so quite often you do work do work blind by comparison so let's just see there i've done it there you go it's still under tension there i'm gonna work out what's going on there squeeze that down this is not perfect as an example okay Yeah, I think slave pin. That's a threaded port there, though. So I can't really do that cleverly. I'm looking for a Goldilocks pin. It's just right. Oh, hang on. Okay, I got it. I just happened to. Get the correct alignment around and dropped it in. There are some anti tamper grub screws which are missing. Somebody else has been in here. Not surprised, mind, but. We'll use that to just loosen the tension a tiny bit. There's no tension on that one. But there's tension on this one. Curious. It 
it's difficult to do this on a wobbly table. See, there's a grub screw. Oh, wrong camera. Right, there you go. There's a grub screw mark there. So there are locking internal side lock, locking pins that have been removed and not replaced. Curious about that. Well, not really. Flipping camera, stop wobbling. There we have it. Okay. So that should be around there. Clearly. As whether or not it should be a full half turn clockwise or anti-clockwise. And you can see the missing grub screw there. That should be there to retain that pin. And as usual, it needs to be tighter, not looser. So it's a wonderful turn. I've got a gain on that. Let me just see what I can do. Focus again, please. Thank you. I'm doing it resting on my chin. Chin. There we go. Right. So I've just. There you go. It's proud. I did it rested on my chest. It was just easier. That's how I coordinate. So there is a grub screw missing there. It should be in there to retain that pin. Don't have that. I'm going to have to refer that to the customer. So that's the old one that will be replaced. And that's slightly different from that side. So now I've got to figure out how to compress that spring. In order to cock it, which we can't do in the gun because it needs to be cocked. Such fun. All right, so can we do this without damaging my fingers? And there you go. Oh, I wish I would keep it on the camera. There we go. Did you see that, guys? There we go. There's your anti Beretta quite good at this. I like this is why. Some ways, well, I know I, I like different guns, but stop wobbling. Right. So there's your. <laughs> I'm working with very close camera, as you can tell. Here is your anti-double discharge. So if the sear was for any reason jarred, if I can, I can't, nah, it's, it wants to go. In theory, I should better show you this. Let me see if I can do it. I don't know. It's to stop it doubling on a discharge if the jarring effect Right, this I, I did off camera, just so I didn't slip. Oh, I did, I, I can't remember. No, I didn't, I did it in front of you, didn't I? There. That's like a half cock, if you like. It does sort of serve itself as a anti-tamper, do I? Right, so this is full cock, there you go. So, there we have it. So I've showed you all that, but guess what, guys? Epic, ooh, here it is. I've showed you all that. Epic fail. I've got to take it all apart again and lubricate it, because I did that without lubricant, so that it wasn't difficult to do. <laughs> but when it's greasy, it's a lot harder to do. But I wanted to show you how it went together again. So that's one side done. So I need to get that lubed up on all those high pressure points. Probably with a bit of molly. I, I suspect that'll be the favourite. Lithium will do the same thing too. I'll d I won't bother doing boring you with that. I'll just get it done, and so on. So next lock. Same kind of features again. 
scrub screw missing. This comes out easily enough. It's a little screwdriver because you can see better what I'm doing. This spring is in fact okay, but I'm replacing it because it's sister or brother, whichever you want to say, has already been in the wars. So we're not taking chances. This one could have almost the same amount of wear. You're going to laugh now. I'm going to use a 2-2 pellet, which is lead, and it won't mark anything. Just as a little spacer there, look. There you go. And there it is, released. So that jumped out nicely. It's a bit rusty. So now, let's just gently push these out. Okay. That's not coming out so easily. That's curious. That third pin simply serves to hold that at the tension. Oh, dull. I'll stop doing that. Pushing them out from the wrong side. Little springs trying to get away. Original V-spring, bit rusty, looking a bit tired, but it's still, sorry guys, I'm looking at the job, not looking at the camera, right. Dirty plate, dirty components. Nice spring, old spring, let's see if there's any difference in them. Hmm, it's a bit, a bit compressed. Focus right, come on, focus. There you go. It's slightly under compression. It's lost a bit of its whiz. There you go, next one. Right, quick clean. I'm really making too much of this video as it is. Just have to speed things up a bit. just shows you there's there's a minimum a minimal amount of lubrication on this and it still picks up dirt I do like me cotton buds there we have it okay so just clean through there yes it's dirty but it's not terrible a bit of lithium molly grease because we're going to do it properly. Just a small smidge in there. That's, no, that's too much. I think I actually do have to take off some of that. Yeah, that's fine. I'm right, going to have to get it on my fingers. Ho oh, hum. This will make it slide easier. Haven't cleaned that yet. All that, right. There's only a little bit of soap. I don't need to do anything hot, like a hot bath, hot oil bath or anything. There's no none of that kind of thing going on. If it was worse, an ultrasonic bath would work, would help. This is only really just surface dirt. It's nothing more than that. A bit of tired grease. It's 
So a little blob in there, little wipe on there, wipe on, wipe off. See, Mr. Miyagi had to be in there somewhere, didn't he? That's it. I will tell you, there is an unscrupulous action that certain gun shops will do. They will just smother a, a lock with grease. Now, I will put liberal amounts on a mainspring coil spring in a box lock. It just stops it chafing because a coil spring sits over a mainspring guide pin and they chafe and that causes all sorts of friction so yeah there are occasions where you will find I've put copious amounts of grease in but in a lot like this oh, listen, that's off camera but in a lot like this you don't need to Splurge it, it's already quite well polished anyway. Right, so pop that in there, somewhat like we did before. And same. This spring just has a slightly longer one side. And yes, but pick up what we prepared earlier. <laughs> right, slave pin is engaged. I mean, look at how few parts, well, this is true artistry. This is where my job actually becomes quite pleasurable not gonna lie oh, off camera again sorry guys now a lot harder when it's greasy just saying Sounded ambiguous that, didn't mean it like that. So align the two up, push that in, and not make my camera wobble. There you go. Slave pin out, good pin in. Yes, good. We need a slave pin for this one. No, we're, we're all good. All right, so we're going to clear this. Pop that last pin in. And then we're going to do that little trick again. It's going to want to spring. Yeah, I was about to say it did it. It's going to want to spring on this side. Uh, right, see if I can do it for your viewing pleasure. I don't know if I can. It may not be that simple. My hands are greasy now, of course, which is why I didn't do the other one. I just knew it was going to be harder. I haven't put the old dirty one back. No, just checking. <laughs> Trust me, done it before. Okay. Uh, as I said, snapped into place. Lovely. I've greased that already. 
Is that going to need to be encouraged as well? Yes. Just a little. There it is. Don't know whether you saw that. It was all a bit quick. And no, I'm not going to do it again. Sorry. Okay. This one's a bit easier because there's no friction from the lack of lubrication. This one's lubricated. So it is actually going back together nicely. There's that little half turn. There it is. I'm not going to put them back in because they're not here. Previous uh, entrance has already removed them and lost them. Hey, wait a minute. It is what it is. Okay, so a tensioning exercise now. Whether I can do it, I need to set myself out a bit better here. Right. I generally brace things at my chest, which is why you don't. Uh, why things keep going off camera. I think you saw that. Kind of saw it. Yeah, there you go. So there you have it. This one's going to be lubricated. I'm going to get a cup of tea. I'll be back. So two locks done. Lovely, happy with that. Two, two springs replaced, all the lock as before. That's the recap. Then we come to replacing these broken screws. I go to Beretta, direct, get them to send them to me. They don't cost a lot of money, but they cost a fortune by the time they've been shipped with the flipping post office. Not my best friend, I'm telling you. So you can see there's a little head on these screws now. If I can try and manipulate that on the camera. That's what it looks like on the back, on the reverse. Magnetic screwdrivers. And this is how it looks. So I guess back to the drawing board. It's back to cutting a bit of three mil thread and uh, making screws from scratch. So here we have it. Here's the one that I had to remake. Hand filed with diamond files to get an accurate screw thread. Incidentally, cheap threads are nominal, which means that they uh, are a sloppy fit. So I had to find another solution to make some more screws. So I had to make the screw from scratch, all in three mil. But there it is, it looks nice. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Thanks guys.